me today. We're going to go over um, exponential functions, solving exponential equations by the same base or different bases, and then we're going to go quickly through properties of exponents. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's look at this graphic organizer really quickly. The graphic organizer shows us how to find the exponents. What are the properties of exponents? You're just going to follow along with me and fill in the blanks. The first blank says B is called the blank. Base. B is called the base. Very good. Oh, it stopped. Okay, then we go to the next side. X is called the blank. Uh, Pay attention. All of them. B is called the exponent. Okay, so properties of exponents. There's four prop or three properties: multiplication, division. Zero and negative exponents, okay? When multiplying two bases that are the same, you see how this is x squared, x to the fifth, x cubed, I guess? I can't even tell. x to the ninth times x to the sixth times x squared. You're going to add the exponent. Very good. So what is 9 plus 6 plus 2? Uh, 2 is 17. 18. 17 or 18? 17. When you raise a power to another power, what do we do with the exponent? You're going to multiply the exponent. Very good. This is a review of something you already learned in the past. So you're going to multiply the exponent. In this case, what's 2 times 5? 10. 10. x raised to the power of 10. Very good. And then the last property when you're multiplying ex exponents is to find the power of a product, you blank the exponent. Distribute. Yeah, very good. So you're going to distribute. Have you seen this already? No. Yes, I have. You tied it to me. No, but she's tied it to me. Like in the past or something. Okay, so to find the power of a distributive product. To find the power of a product, you distribute the exponent. Okay, so you're going to have 2 to the power of 3 times x squared times 3. What is that? 2 to the 6. Good. And y to the power of 15. Perfect. I distributed the 3 to each of my values. Okay? So I went 3 times 2, 3 times x, and 3 times y. So it's also the number? Uh-huh. So what is 2 to the power of 3? 3 times 2 times 2, 3 two times, times is 4, 8. 12. 8 or 12? Okay, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. <laughs> 8. Alright, let's go to the middle. Division properties. When dividing two bases that are the same, you blank the exponents. The bases are the same. What do we do? We're going to subtract yes. the exponents. Very good. So you really have, what's 13 minus 2? 11. So you're left with x to the power of 11. To find the power of a quotient, what does quotient mean? Division. Multiple, yeah, division. Sorry, I was going to say multiplication. To find the power of division, you blank the exponent to the blank and blank. What? To find the power of a quotient, you distribute. The exponent to the numerator, and I'm just going to abbreviate N-U-M, and the denominator, D-E-N-O-M. Okay, so when you do that, what is your final answer? Well, that's not your final answer. Let's do a step at a time. X to the power of 4 times 3. X to the power of 12, very good. Over X, or not X, but Y to the power of 2 times 3 equals to y to the power of 6. Are these from the same family, same gang, same no. neighborhood? Nope, they're different letters, so that's as far as you can go. That's your final answer. Let's look at 0 and negative exponents. Any non-zero number raised to the 0 power is equal to, in other words, if you have 5 raised to the power of 0, what do you get? No. 1. One. Let's see. It's part of always one. Always one. Exactly. Always. No matter what. No matter what. Okay. 
be with you. 2x to the power of 0 is? Well, it's going to be 1. Notice how they had parentheses around the 2x. If I would have only had 2 times x to the power of 0, then this would actually be 2 times 1. Okay? So the parentheses tell you what you're raising, what number you're raising to the power of 0. All right, how do negative exponents become positive? So I need you to put flip negative exponents. So flip negative exponents to the opposite side. I'm just going to put to opposite. Because really, if it's in the numerator, so if I had like 2 to the negative 2, I would actually write 1 over 2 to the power of 2. But if my negative exponent was in the bottom, and I had x to the power of negative 4, you would have to switch it to the top and have x to the power of 4 over 1. Okay, so for example, that last example says 2 times x to the power of 0 times y minus 5 to all raised to 3. The first step is to distribute the 3. So you have 2 to the power of 3 times x to the power of 0 times 3 times y to the power of negative 5 times 3. What is 2 to the power of 3? Equal to. 2 times 2 times 2 is? 8. We did it earlier. What is x to the power of 0 times 3? Yeah. x to the power of 0 one. turns into 1. Thing. And then negative 5 times 3 is? Now, can I leave that negative exponent? No. No, I want to change it to the bottom. So everything else stays in the top. But the denominator becomes y to the power of 15. Your final answer is 8 over y to the power of 15. How come there isn't an x?